How do we know how the different atoms are attached in a molecule? Well, we use Lewis structures in order to determine that. The very first step that we need to look at is to count all the valence electrons for each element in the molecule. By looking at the position of the element on the periodic table and the column that it sits in, we can determine the number of valence electrons. Nitrogen sits in column 5, or 15, and so it has 5 valence electrons. We have 3 oxygens included in this NO3 example. The oxygens each have 6 valence electrons. Because there's 3 of them, we multiply by 3. We also have a negative charge. That negative charge means that there is an additional electron included in the structure. So we add one additional electron. So for nitrate, nitrogen with three oxygens and a negative charge, we have a total of 24 electrons to use. The second step is to draw the least electronegative, the most metallic, the one furthest left and down on the periodic table in the center and the other elements surrounding it. Step three is to draw in at a single bond from each of the outer elements to that center central element. We count up the number of electrons that it takes to draw those single bonds. In this case, because there's three oxygens, it's going to take three bonds, which is six electrons. We subtract those electrons from our total. We have 18 electrons left to use. We start filling the outside elements with lone pairs until they each have eight electrons, including the bond. So we complete the octets for those outer elements. By doing this, on our example of nitrate, there are two. There are six electrons added to each of the oxygens for a total of 18 electrons. We have no electrons left. We now look to see that everything, all of our elements, have a total of eight electrons. So our outside oxygens all have eight electrons. There are six in the lone pairs and two in the bonds. But our nitrogen only has three bonds for a total of six electrons. In order to make nitrogen and complete its octet, we need to share a lone pair of electrons and form a double bond. So our structure is going to look like this with two oxygens with three lone pair electrons, and one oxygen with two lone pairs and a double bond. This way, every element is sharing electrons in order to form an octet, or eight electrons around that atom. Let's try a couple of examples. So, we're going to start by adding up the electrons. So arsenic is in column 5 or 15, so it has 5 valence electrons. Hydrogen is in column 1, so it has 1 electron each, but there are 3 hydrogens. So this gives us a total of 8 electrons to work with. Hydrogen can only ever be an outside element because hydrogen, the closest noble gas, is helium. It only wants to gain one electron or share one electron to become like helium. So our arsenic has to go in the center. We're going to draw our three hydrogens around the outside and draw a single bond to each one. 
So by drawing our single bonds, we have now used six electrons. We have two electrons left. As I've stated before, hydrogen is unique in that it only wants to have two electrons. So our hydrogens are complete. The two additional electrons go on the center atom so that arsenic can have eight electrons. It has six electrons from the bonds to hydrogen and then the two additional electrons we add on as a lone pair. So our Lewis structure is complete by adding those electrons. I'm now going to do an example of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, carbon is in the fourth column, so it has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six, and there are two of them. So we have 16 electrons to work with. The element that's further left or down is carbon. So it's going to go in the center, and we're going to draw our oxygens around the outside. We draw a single bond from each oxygen to the carbon, which uses four electrons. We have 12 electrons left to use. We're going to fill the octets for each of our oxygens. This requires us to use 12 electrons. We have no electrons left. Our oxygens are happy with eight electrons, but our carbon is not. It only has four. So we are going to take the lone pair and share it with the carbon in order to complete carbon's octet. This leaves carbon with two double bonds. Now our oxygen has eight electrons. Each oxygen has eight electrons. And our carbon also has eight electrons in the form of two double bonds. So this would be our Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Pause the video and see if you can complete the Lewis structures for the final four compounds. If we look at our methane, carbon has four electrons. Each hydrogen has one electron, but there are four of them. So we have a total of eight electrons to use with our methane. Again, carbon has to go in the center because hydrogen only wants two electrons. We draw the hydrogens around the carbon and connect them with a single bond. By drawing our single bond, we've used two, four, six, eight electrons. We have no electrons left. Our hydrogen is happy with two electrons, and our carbon has a complete octet with the four single bonds that it forms. If we look at water, water has one valence electron from each hydrogen plus six valence electrons from the oxygen. This gives us a total of eight electrons to work with. Oxygen is going to go in the center, and we're going to draw the hydrogens around the oxygen. By connecting the hydrogens to the oxygen with a single bond, we have used four of our electrons. The hydrogens are content with two electrons, so the additional four electrons go onto the oxygen as lone pairs. This uses all of our electrons, and our oxygen now has eight electrons around it, two from the single from each single bond and two from the lone pair. Carbon has four valence electrons in our cyanide anion. Nitrogen has five. 
and we have an additional electron from the negative charge. So we have a total of 10 electrons that we can use. We are going to connect our carbon to our nitrogen, which uses two electrons. We have eight left to use. Typically, we like to draw symmetrical molecules. And so we're going to put the eight electrons evenly spaced on the carbon and the nitrogen. We have no electrons left. And our Lewis structure, neither the carbon nor the nitrogen are, are happy because they only have six electrons each. We're going to take one of our lone pairs and share it between the two elements. Now our nitrogen is content with eight electrons two from the double bond and two from the lone pairs, but our carbon only has six. So we're going to continue to do this until each element has eight electrons. By sharing an additional lone pair, now our carbon has six from the bond, the bond, the triple bond drawn, and two from the lone pair. Our nitrogen has six from the triple bond drawn, and two from the lone pair. So it has a complete octet and is happy. Sulfur is in column six, has six valence electrons. Our oxygen is in column six with six valence electrons but we have three oxygen. That gives us a total of 24 electrons to work with. Our sulfur is further down on the periodic table, and so it goes in the center with our oxygens drawn around it. We're gonna connect each oxygen to the sulfur with a single bond, which uses six electrons leaving us 18. We now fill the outside octet, outside atoms octet, by completing, by adding electrons, which uses all 18 of our available electrons. There are no electrons left. Our oxygens have octets, but our sulfur does not. And so we're going to have to take a lone pair from the oxygen, and it doesn't matter which oxygen you choose, and make a double bond. Now, our oxygens each have eight electrons, and our sulfur also has eight electrons. So this would be our Lewis structure for sulfur trioxide.